Welcome, friends. This is the path to my garden. I've been gardening for 18 years, and for 12 years of that time, we had 0.25 acres with a garden and chickens. Because we wanted a larger garden and fruit trees, we moved six years ago to a home with 0.4 acres. By planning well and doing all of our landscaping ourselves, we have what I consider to be a dream yard. We have a play area for our kids on one side of the yard, as well as a concrete pad for basketball, a gravel drive for our house trailer, and a long raspberry bed on the other side of the house. In the backyard, we fit a garden shed, a vegetable garden that is 30 by 50 feet, an orchard that's the same size and doubles as a chicken run, a 12 by 16 foot greenhouse, and an apiary that fits up to five beehives. Because that's still not enough growing space, we're adding three more raised bed planters in our gravel driveway, and we're squeezing in extra beds in all the nooks and crannies of the garden. Come on in, I've got a lot to show you. When you first walk into my garden, you'll see this landscape block bed. We put this in so that we would have something really pretty to look at from out of our back windows. And we use it as a pollinator garden. We plant herbs and things like catmint and autumn joy sedum that provide a lot of pollen and nectar for our bees. Those things are also a little bit short. So having this raised landscape bed gives them a little bit of height. Another thing we like about this bed is it gives people a place to sit. People can come over and visit with me while I'm working in the garden, or if I need to take a break, we can just sit right on the edge. Right here I grow lemon balm and yarrow. These are herbs that can get a little bit out of control, so by containing them in buckets, it keeps them from spreading too far. This is a welded steel bed that my husband built for me just to give us more places to grow things. Last year I grew herbs in it, so this year I'll grow something else. I believe in rotating my crops. That really is a natural way to prevent pests and diseases. Right here we have two lifetime composters. We really like them. The majority of our garden is built out of these highway guardrail beds. We wanted something that was long lasting that we wouldn't ever have to redo. And then we also have trellises in two of the beds this one right here and then the one right next to it that way we can grow things like sugar snap peas which you can see coming up right now and then green beans we put string from down here up to the top and then we're able to grow a lot more vegetables than we would otherwise be able to in this small backyard garden we built these hoops that you see behind me ourselves. We did it so that we would have season extension. We're able to start plants earlier in the spring and extend our harvest further into the fall. We put plastic on the biggest hoops and frost cloth on the smaller ones, and that just keeps the soil warmer and protects things from when it gets just a little bit too cold. If you're interested in making these yourselves, I'll leave a link in the description below. In this bed, it's two thirds full of onions, one third yellow onions and one third red onions. They're both long storing types. We find that they do really well in this raised bed. This is some lettuce that I started in the fall. It's doing really well now that it's getting warm. And then in this bare area is where I'm gonna put my peppers once all danger of frost is gone. This bed was our strawberry bed up until just a couple of days ago. The strawberries were really, really tasty, but we only got a few of them every day and it just wasn't worth it to me to give up all this space for a few strawberries every day. So instead we're going to put in hog panels and grow some squash vertically. And I think that we'll get a lot more harvest for the space by doing that. As we continue over here, you can see that we have a galvanized feed trough. We like to make use of these everywhere that we can. This one had peppers in it last year and because peppers like the heat they did really well the light reflected off of this fence and this steel planter heated up and they just thrived here and did great over here we needed a retaining wall because our yard is lower than our neighbors so we put in a service berry bed so that it could double as a place for growing some more things I grew up back east where blueberries grow wild and they're so delicious. But where I live here in Utah, blueberries just won't grow happily. The soil is too alkaline and blueberries love acidic soil and acidic rain. So when I learned about service berries, I just knew we had to grow some. They're dark blue, just like a blueberry. They have a lot of the same nutrients and I get a harvest for three weeks every June. They're really tasty, not the same as a blueberry, but to me, they're just as good. We put landscape cloth along all of our walkways and that means that there's minimal weeding, no sprays, and we can get out here early in the spring without having to deal with any mud. Right here we have two more galvanized feed troughs that we use. This one has English thyme and sage in it and I hope to plant a few more herbs that don't mind a little bit of shade because this is on the north side of our shed. And right over here in this planter, 
we have rhubarb growing and you can see it's already starting to come up in just a few weeks it's just going to be overflowing this space and rhubarb is something that grew where i grew up in connecticut and it also grows here just as well we have this six foot fence around our garden because when we first moved in, there was a herd of deer that would come in every night in our backyard. And we knew that deer would just love our vegetables. And by having a six foot fence and having raised beds scattered throughout, the deer feel like they can't land safely. If you don't have raised beds or things that keep them from thinking they can land safely, then you have to do an eight foot fence to keep the deer out. Right next to the garden, we have our orchard and our chickens. We've got a pear tree, an apple tree, another apple tree, a peach, and an apricot tree. Right across from our chicken coop, there's a little sidewalk separating it, is our greenhouse. We put this in just um, a couple years ago so that we could have somewhere to transplant things and get things started earlier in the spring without having to use so many lights in the basement. It does still get cold in here at night, just as cold as it does outside, but then during the day it gets really, really warm, which really helps things to germinate and helps get them nice and ready to go outside. I just wanted to add that because it does get just as cold in here as it does outside of the greenhouse at night, I don't leave tender things out here overnight. If I have peppers or tomatoes or basil, I bring them inside for the night and then bring them back out here for during the day. Because we live in an area that gets a lot of wind, my husband drilled a hole into our paver stones so that the latch on the door actually goes right down into the ground and that keeps the door from being flimsy at all during any wind storms and keeps it nice and secure. Then we've got this potting bench that if I spill dirt or want to water my plants, I can do it right here on the bench and the dirt and the water just goes right down here into the bark and it doesn't matter how messy it gets. I have this tote that I keep my mixed up dirt in for planting seedlings. And then there's a nice chair here. I don't actually often sit in it, but it's there in case I need it. We do have three windows on the back of the greenhouse. The two on the ends are automatic. And this one right here in the middle is manual. And then we do have a fan up here at the top that it's really hard to keep a greenhouse cool when it's a sunny day. So having a fan is a must. I've got down here, some tunnels for holding my frost cloth. That way it keeps it a little bit warmer in here. And I learned that from Elliot Coleman. I have some lettuce that I planted in the middle of the winter and it is just barely getting started. Some other lettuce that I started this fall. And then I've been learning how to grow in these fabric pots and these are doing so much better than the stuff that's planted in the ground. I found that the stuff in the ground just stays much too wet because there's often snow piled up pretty high against this side of the greenhouse. But these lettuces in these fabric pots are doing really well. And when the greenhouse does get too hot in a few weeks, I can move these outside to the garden to a slightly shady place and they will be perfectly happy there. This is a thermometer device that I use to keep track of the temperature of my greenhouse. I have it set so that it will alert me if it's too hot or too cold. This right here talks to a hub that's inside of my house, which then sends information over the internet to an app, which I have on my phone. And it alerts me if it's below freezing or if it's above 110 degrees, that way I can take action. If it's below freezing, then I can come out here and add frost cloth to my tunnels. If it's getting too hot, I can come out and open my manual window or turn the fan up a little bit higher. Maybe water the plants to get the temperature to a more reasonable level. Right next to the door of the greenhouse, we have another automatic vent and all the automatic vents are just wax. So they don't require any electricity. When it's really warm, the wax expands and the window opens up. We also have shade cloth in here because as I mentioned before, when it's really sunny, greenhouses get really hot really quick. So in addition to having the fan, we have some shade cloth because on a sunny day, even if there's a foot of snow, it can get over 120 degrees in here pretty quickly. On the south side of the greenhouse here, we have a little planter that we keep flowers for the bees. We plant sunflowers or cosmos, and those are really good for our pollinators. And then this is also where I can explain that there's just a short board separating the dirt from inside of the greenhouse and outside of the greenhouse. So that's why when there's snow piled up on the outside, the dirt inside the greenhouse gets wet. The water's just able to travel right through and keeps it a little too soggy. 
This area right here south of the greenhouse is our latest project. We're planning to put in three planters total. You can see one that we just finished building but haven't put into place. This one is done and has lettuce planted that I'm just waiting to have germinate. And we hope to put in the third one before the end of the season and maybe surround them with pavers to make it really look nice. If you're interested in making these, I'll leave a link in the description below. This is my apiary. We've got two thriving beehives. The one right here behind me that stained wood and the one at the far end. The one in the middle was struggling this fall, so I knew there was a good chance they weren't gonna make it over the winter. Unfortunately, that sometimes happens. We got our bees three years ago and we just love having them in our backyard. It's been great to learn about them and have the kids help. I have two nieces that live right next door that help all the time. We love having them in our garden and having them help to pollinate. We get a little bit of honey in the fall and the kids are able to walk right past the beehives and they don't get bothered at all by them. And they're just a great addition to the backyard. This is our raspberry planter. It's about 40 feet long and we've got three varieties of raspberries in here. We have canby, ann, and polka. The ann raspberries are yellow when they're ripe, which makes it really fun for the kids to try to find. Usually yellow raspberries means they're not ripe yet. They're all really good varieties. We get a good harvest every day during the summer and even more during the fall. Our kids enjoy eating them ripe and they come out early in the morning to try to be the first ones to pick them. Thanks for coming along with me on this tour of my garden. I hope you got a few ideas of things that you can implement into your garden, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.